Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Trinity Stamps. Today we are going to be using the Thanks A Watt dies. This is kind of the star of the show. And then the, I think it's What's Up, you know, Watt, What's Up, you get what I'm saying. Catching Some Rays stencil. And then we're also going to be using this Halo Light from Pear Blossom Press. Um, so I thought it would be really cute to do a light up shaker card. Um, and so that's kind of the game plan today. Um, this would be a great kind of more masculine Valentine or just a general encouragement card. Um, so in or I thought I was going to do my stenciling first and then I realized like I probably needed a little bit of a background. So I am just, I picked some like bluish teal colors starting with my lightest color and then working out to my darkest color. Um, the, I am still... <laughs> which I apologize. I'm, I'm limping it through is basically what's happening um, until I can return it and get another camera. But we're currently in the middle of Snowmageddon, so I have not had an opportunity to return it, and I still have to work. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, there is a portion of the ink blending that is missing. Not this part. It's actually a portion of the stenciling, which is kind of a bummer, but um, you you get what I'm saying. Um, anyway, I wanted the center point to be the lightest because that's where my light is going to come from. And so I wanted it to be darker edges so that there was like this little halo around the light bulb and then of course we will be using the actual light up feature which will light up and illuminate the card emit this light from the center so it made more sense for the center to be lighter for my background um i typically with ink blending i like to do two layers of ink blending i just feel like it gives me the best blend. Sometimes when I'm stenciling, I won't do two layers. This time I decided to do them because outside of the light up element and the shaker, and not to not to say that isn't enough to carry the card, but really the vast majority of what you're going to see is this background. So I wanted to make sure it was really nice, blended really nicely. You guys know I love my little blending buddies. I think these things are the cat's pajamas. And so I did do it twice just because you, that's really a lot of what you're going to see. Now, the light bulb is the focal point, but the vast majority of the background is the stencil. Speaking of the stencil, do I ever make a Trinity card where I don't use the stencil? I don't know. And I guess to me, like, that just goes to show the... Um, like how good it is, is how many times I go back and use it. Um, and I'm always drawn to it. I think it's a really, really great stencil. Um, so now that the stencil is in place, I'm doing the same color combination right over top of it. And I did do this twice. You'll be able to see it, I think, one one time all the way through. And then that's where I ran into some camera issues. Because as I'm normally, when I film, I typically just let the camera run until I'm done doing what I'm doing. And then I take care of all of that in the editing. I'm having to self-edit while I am doing... Um, so that the camera doesn't shut off on me. So at parts where there would be a natural pause, I stop the camera so that it doesn't stop itself. And then um, I can restart it. So now the ink blending is done. I'm going to use the second layer for the stencil, but this time I'm not going to do any ink blending. I'm actually going to be using some glitter paste. Um, why? Because it's fun. That's why. I love a lot of sparkle. I love a lot of shine. And even on a more masculine um, type card, I feel like it's perfectly appropriate. It matches with the theme of the card. And uh, it's clear. So it's not super like in your face. They're just little lines of glitter, which add to the feel of the light kind of like emanating from this light bulb. This card would work without the shaker element and without the light element as just a general um, card. So if you like, I love the layout, but I'm not interested in doing all that other heavy lifting for the other elements, like no, no fear. You don't have to. So now 
I'm going to cut out the rest of my elements. I have the little, what is that, like a little filament inside. I chose the one that looks like a heart, but there's a lot of other options. Um, I'm also cutting out the detail layer for the light bulb out of silver, and then everything else will be out of white. For the actual shaker element, light up element to work, I do have to cut one of the light bulbs out of the center of the card. And then you'll see off to the right, I'm also cutting myself a frame, which I actually didn't even end up using. Um, but I'm cutting myself a frame and then I'm using a dark gray cardstock to cut the bottom portion. Now, I could just use the white one I've already cut and color it, but um, I was trying to keep it all pretty simple without um, a lot of coloring just because I think that that's how most people would do it. So now with the light bulb, I did choose to do some ink blending because I didn't want it to be solid yellow. I kind of wanted it to be a bit lighter and kind of fade off. So I started with squeezed lemonade and then I added shading more towards the bottom with a mustard seed and then finally fossilized amber. I did shade these both kind of the same way um, where one would layer on top of the other because let's face it, if you have a light bulb that is lighting up, um, that yellow, can, well, it's not, I mean, it's not always yellow. Most of the time it's bright white nowadays, you know, because we have fancy light bulbs. Um, but that light would be emitting around the light bulb as well as around the base of the light bulb. So now we're on to the building portion. Um, this is just super simple. I just kind of layered everything up. It was really easy to put together. The um, little filament I cut out of that silver cardstock. Love this little heart. I think it's totally adorable. The second portion is supposed to be the light that's coming from it. I think this would be great if you wanted to do like a neon um, to really utilize that little um, outline piece. But I chose to do just white since that's the light that I will have behind it. Um, and then once those are put together, I'll be able to put both of them onto the light bulb. The little glue press makes that super, super easy. Um, so just push that down into place. The most finicky of the bits is the details for the base of the light bulb. But once I realized that basically outside of the bottom piece, which is a different shape, all the rest of them are pretty much the same exact shape, it made it go much easier because I didn't have to be worried about, well, what layers where. They're all the same length. So you can just pick them up and put them down. And then there is little embossed lines um, into the die for you to follow to see where those go. Uh, I think that little bit of metallic is just a fun way to, um, you know, add, you know how I love the details and the extras and all of those things. So you could certainly, you could do like a fancy gold light bulb. Um, you could do it black. I just went with the um, silver because I wanted to use the silver for the heart portion. Here is the halo light. This is sold in the Trinity store, also sold at Pear Blossom Press. I've never used one of these before. This is how they come. You just kind of snap them apart. They snapped apart super easy. And then this particular pack, the halo pack, comes with two halo lights, which as you can see, the lights are in a circle. And then it also comes with four one lights. These are really easy. You just pull the light out, the little battery out, and then you put it in with the positive side up, and then that's it. It, it lights up. And so you can see even without the shaker element, um, you it would still light up and you would still see the light. However, I wanted there to be a shaker element. So I didn't want my light bulb to fill the entire space. I wanted there to be a little bit of a gap for um, what later on is going to be my vellum to help diffuse the light. And so I did go back in with the largest light bulb, which is meant for the shadow, and I cut that out. Here I have a piece of acetate. This ended up being, I think, four and a quarter by two and three quarters. This is going to be my shaker element. Yes, I know that's not a lot of real estate. It's more of a flat shaker, um, but I'm okay with it because there's, so, I, I mean, I don't want to say so much like it's a bad thing. There's so much going on with this card. Um, I didn't really feel like it was necessary to 
add even more bulk so that I could have a true shaker. So this is just the rip and stick tape from Trinity. This is great. You put it down, rip it. You don't need to cut it. And then you can just peel it off so that the sticky side is exposed. At this point, I was getting a little ahead of myself because I needed to figure out how to assemble the card. And an engineer, I am not. So first things first, I laid down my card base. I taped over my um, top piece background, and then I traced it so I would know where to put the light. I'm going to use that same uh, rip and stick tape to adhere my light. It is a strong adhesive. And then I just went all the way around. I, you probably don't even need as much tape as I used, honestly, but I have a problem. I, I don't know. I don't want my cards to fall apart. So I'm over generous with my adhesive. I know that about myself. It's okay. It's, it's an okay problem to have. So once I peel the release paper off, I'm going to stick that in right exactly where my traced portion is. And then, of course, as you're doing interactive cards, we're always constantly testing and playing <laughs> because you want to see how it looks. So that's what I'm doing there. Now, here is that vellum. It's the same size as my um, acetate. It is uh, four and a quarter by two and three quarters. I'm just going to glue my light bulb into the center. This is going to, one, help hide my mechanism in that gap, and two, help diffuse the light so that it is brighter and it goes farther. So before I can adhere that down, because I do want my shaker elements to be on top of the light bulb, I have to put in my foam tape. The foam tape is necessary for the top of the card to clear the mechanism for the light. Now, I am using, um, what is this? This is Altenew foam tape. However, I do know Pear Blossom Press has, like, it's called the Best Ever foam tape, and it is the exact width that you need to clear the mechanism. So I ended up having to do two layers of foam tape to clear it um, because, you know, but you, you'll have to play around with your foam tape. It just depends on um, the thickness of the foam tape you have, and they come in varying widths. So here, I wanted to get my uh, light bulb centered. I found that it was easiest to hold the whole card in my hand, get an even border, and then press it down so that it was in the right spot. And now I can go in and adhere my top piece, except I changed my mind again. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally not an engineer. That would not have been, um, that would not have been something I would have been great at accomplishing in my life. However, uh, we did end up figuring it out. So once I peeled all the tape off and then I realized, oh, you still got to put your shaker on here, crazy. Uh, I chose to do, these are like the flat little confetti hearts because again, I knew I wasn't going to have a lot of clearance for my shaker. So I'm looking for something that is super flat and these little confetti pieces will work. I should have spread them out before I went to stick my window on, um, but I didn't. So I thankfully had not pressed all the corners down and I was able to just kind of pick it up, go in, flatten them out a bit. Now my shaker bits will shake around the entirety of this window, this little acetate window, which means they'll shake around in the bottom as well. But I felt like that was okay. I felt like it was a small price to pay to have a light up shaker card. Then this is where I decided to trim it down because I wanted a white border. When you have a card that has a central focal point that you've already done, um, you really do need to trim all four sides to keep it centered. But let's talk about light up shaker cards. So great minds think alike, I guess. Sarah, who is my Trinity teammate, did a light up shaker card as well. But she did the cell phone, and it's brilliant. When you press the little call button, um, all of the like messages, like the little text messages, light up on the screen. It's so cute. If you have not seen that video, I would recommend going and checking it out. Uh, she did a wonderful, wonderful job. So it's just so funny that we ended up both kind of doing the same thing, and I didn't even see hers uh, until I literally put into YouTube light up shaker card because I wanted to um, just like look around and see how other people were putting theirs together, and then I stumbled upon hers. Now, she built hers completely different because her idea is completely different, so that didn't actually help me, uh, but it did help me in the ways of watching an awesome video. 
So um, now there is my white border. I don't need the full border, obviously, and I wasn't going to take the time to die cut it and try to get it in the right place, not when I could just trim it into a square because it's all going to be covered up. Story time. Do we have time for story time? I don't know because I have so much less footage now, uh, now that I'm stopping and starting my camera instead of letting the whole thing run. Um, so basically, it's been... Uh, it's been crazy weather here, so it was brutally, brutally cold. So the kids had a calamity day tu Tuesday? I think it was. No. Wednesday. They had a calamity day Wednesday, so they were off school. And then they had school on Thursday. We actually had bowling. That's a different story time. We had bowling, like family bowling night for the school on Thursday night. And then today they were forecasting like eight to 10 inches. And it was, it wasn't supposed to be bad in the morning. It was only supposed to be like an inch or two. Um, but it was supposed to get really bad in the afternoon. So I was very nervous because I was like, oh, I could probably get them there in the morning. But then what am I going to do? in the afternoon when it's really coming down. So thankfully, and like there's some people who I get it, like you can't take off work and you struggle to find childcare. And I do understand, um, but we did get, and it's only, I mean, we're in the afternoon now. We haven't even gotten all of what we were going to get. Um, it's still coming down, but we probably have four or five inches. So I'll be interested to see what the totals are. Um, so I'm so glad they called school because this mama do not like driving in the snow. I know that I live in a snow state. I live here because my family's here and I love them. Um, but me and snow, we're, we are not good friends unless I don't have to go anywhere and then I don't mind looking at its beauty outside my window. So for the sentiment, as you saw, I did white heat emboss this on a slightly darker piece of um, like a teal cardstock. In order to finish the card off, I am using, I think this is Moonstone. I tried to match the sequin hearts as close as I could um, with the um, little rhinestones. And you know I'm a huge fan of Trinity rhinestones. But that is how I finished the card. So I think it's super cute. Here's the little light up feature. Again, you can obviously see the little shaker bits. I was super happy with the way that it came out. I hope that this inspires you to try something similar. Thank you so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.